Soldiers from wars both old and new march down city streets. Flags hang from homes, businesses, even car antennas. Ceremonies remember those who dutifully served their nation. It's Veterans Day, or Remembrance Day, as it's known in much of the world. A time to honor members of the armed forces. And it all began in a railroad car, with a document to end the war, to end all wars. World War I, also known as the Great War, shocked the global community with its unprecedented toll in human life. Untold millions were killed. Germany was running low on manpower and supplies, so they agreed to sign an armistice, or truce, in the French commander Ferdinand Foch's private rail car. On the 11th hour, on the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, all was quiet on the Western Front. The fighting had ended. Exactly one year later, President Woodrow Wilson decreed that Americans should observe a moment of silence at 11 a.m to remember the armistice and to embrace the peace. Other allied nations commemorated the peaceful anniversary as well. In England and Canada, citizens wore paper poppies. Poppies had become a symbol of the armistice. The poem Flanders Field described a one-time battlefield. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. In America, the nation's first unknown soldier was laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery on Armistice Day, 1921. He was a casualty of the Great War. Since that first memorial, other unknown soldiers from America's wars have been interred in the tomb. And it's become tradition for the president or one of his representatives to lay a wreath on the monument every November 11th. A resolution was passed in 1926, inviting all Americans to remember Armistice Day and the soldiers who fought so hard for peace. The idea caught on. By 1938, the day was marked with so many ceremonies and parades, Congress made it a legal holiday, giving people the day off work. After World War II and the Korean War, Americans wanted to open up the holiday to include not just World War I veterans, but all who served in combat. In 1954, President Dwight Eisenhower, a World War II vet himself, legally changed the U.S. Armistice Day to Veterans Day, honoring those who served in all American wars. For a brief time, starting in 1971, Congress moved the holiday to the fourth Monday in October, giving Americans a three-day weekend. But most people rejected the idea. The traditional date of November 11th, the anniversary of the Great War's ceasefire, was too historically important to forget. President Ford reversed the law in 1975, returning Veterans Day back to its rightful date. Over the decades, the holiday has changed with the times. Originally, it was a call for world peace. Then in the US, it became a day to remember war veterans. Today, Veterans Day is set aside to honor not just those who served in war, but also those who have served their nation in peace. Hi, I'm Todd Hayes, and I teach social studies here at Moses Lake High School. My name is Ryan Carlstrom, and I teach English 10 at Moses Lake High School. Okay, my name is Don Fuller. I'm the custodian at Sage Point Elementary School. My name is Jason Reed. I uh, work at transportation as a bus mechanic. I'm Kim Agrellis. I teach third grade at Lakeview Elementary. I serve in the United States Coast Guard. I was in the Navy. Uh, United States Navy. I was in the Marine Corps. I served in the Army. Uh, I served a bunch of various places. I started in New Jersey. I spent six months in northern Japan. And I spent about two and a half years on this, the Coast Guard Cutter Act. I was stationed at Naval Air Station Whidbey Island, um, Okinawa, Japan, and Djibouti, Africa. Okay, I served uh, several places. One first ship I was on was in Boston, USS Cascade, which was a destroyer tender. And then I went from that to a destroyer uh, stationed out of Guam, USS Kretschmer. I was on that for a year. And in the last two years I was in the Navy, I was on swift boat station in Quinyon, Vietnam. I served most of my time in Okinawa, Japan, and uh, the rest of it was in 29 Palms, California. I served a little bit in Texas and Washington State, and mostly in Germany. I did a four-year enlistment. 
I served four years active duty in the Navy, and then I did six years in the reserves while I was in college. Yeah, I served uh, four years in the Navy. I was in for four years. I was in the Army for about five years. Uh, I joined the military mainly uh, when I got out of high school. Two weeks out of high school, I graduated, I went into the Navy. Um, I didn't have the money to go to college, really wasn't interested in college, and I'd like to I wanted to see the world. I wanted to go see things that I'd been studying about in history and all that. And the Navy was the only one that I could see that would give me the opportunity to go on, uh, across the United States and around different parts of the world. Uh, motivation was just to serve my country and kind of uh, do what I thought was right. Um, with 9-11 still fresh in my mind and everything else, it was one of those things that you know, kind of serve justice to the people who brought that terrible thing to our country. Uh, it was in a different part of the country and you got to meet a lot of different people from all over and that was probably the most interesting. The craziest part to me about boot camp was getting to know people from all over the United States. Um, I met people from all Florida, Texas, New York, and they were all crazy people. So. First of all, I absolutely loved serving in the military. I met amazing people around the world, amazing people in all branches of the military, and I think it's affected my life the most today um, just because I know what amazing people they are. Um, uh, I know what they sacrifice for our country, for what their families sacrifice for our country, um, and, uh, and I just think they're pretty amazing people who uh, continue to serve every day. Somewhat, my dad served in the Air Force Reserves during the Korean War. Well, uh, originally when you say military, I, um, I, my family uh, didn't have, we weren't lifers or anything like that. Uh, at my age, just about everybody has somebody that served in World War II. Uh, I'm 73 years old, so uh, I had uncles that served in the military, and my dad served in the military, but they all basically just were four-year people, and once the war was over with and everything like that, they got out and went on with their lives. I do. My, uh, my grandpa was in the Navy. My mom was in the Air Force. My dad was in the Army. My older brother joined the Air Force. Um, um, my uncle was in the, Air, or in the Navy, and uh, my younger brother, he uh, joined the Marine Corps after I did. Uh, I was a Petty Officer Second Class, I was a radio man, uh, and got to spend some interesting time up in the radio room with a Coast Guard Cutter, working uh, emergencies, search and rescues, drug operations, uh, it was pretty interesting. So as an officer in training, I went to advanced camp, which is a little bit different from boot camp. Um, what I enjoyed the most was infantry training and getting to lead an ambush or a raid or uh, any, any of those infantry type um, uh, tactics um, in, you know, in our training to be able to show our leadership skills. I think being in the military gave me a respect for people who have sacrificed their lives uh, to fight for our country. Veterans Day for me has been a kind of a sorry subject for Vietnam vets all over. You know, we were that era uh, in the United States wasn't treated all that great. But I am glad to see that it's the service people are getting their due. They deserve it. When they serve your country and you put your life on the line and risk it. You deserve to be, when you come home, to be treated and respected. And that's, to me, I'm, I'm, it's what I think that should be done. First of all, I absolutely loved serving in the military. I met amazing people around the world, amazing people in all branches of the military. And I think it's affected my life the most today, um, just because I know what amazing people they are. Um, uh, I know what they sacrifice for our country, for what their families sacrifice for our country, um, and, uh, and I just think they're pretty amazing people who uh, continue to serve every day. I just hope everybody takes that day to remember everybody who served. Go find a veteran. You have them in your families, you have them in your neighborhoods, uh, and just be grateful for 
the time, the effort, and the sacrifices they put in. Veterans Day to me is uh, thanking the ones that have served, that have, have put their lives and their, their livelihood online. People don't realize that people put their lives on hold pretty much when they join the military. They, they join and they, they go and, you know, whether it's four years or 20 years, they, they kind of don't know what normal life is anymore. So I, I think the ones that have um, kind of sacrificed normal life for the military life um, it is a completely different lifestyle, and I, I think those ones that have done that and that will uh, be, be doing that for years to come. So Veterans Day to me is just an opportunity to really remember to thank those people who are serving uh, today and their families who also sacrifice a lot, as well as those who have served in the past. Thank you for your service. So much for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. For the selfless job you had at serving our country, thank you for your service.